Soldiers from the 741st MI Battalion on the range qualifying under the new Army Marksmanship Standard. More on the 741st and the Training Support Center in a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, a look at this year's Women's History Month observance. And April is the month of the military child. We'll look at some upcoming events on the Family Advocacy Program calendar. These stories and more, but first at the April Installation Town Hall, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp hosted a panel focused on on-post housing. However, he opened with status reports on a number of construction projects, including Reese Road Gate. The colonel responded to questions about Reese Road Gate as the main gate. And, and so from my concerns when I look at Reese Gate as a main gate is from a manpower standpoint from our security guards, we don't have enough people to hold all four gates open with the current hours we do. If I open a fourth gate for rush hour, then I am closing one of the other three gates earlier in the day or around lunchtime, afternoon, however we want to be flexible. But from a straight labor hour position, uh, something has to go in order to open up Reese in the mornings. A big topic of discussion out the town hall was the annual Army Housing Tenant Satisfaction Survey. As of March 20th, the Army Housing Office reported the overall survey response rate of 18.5% for family housing and 14.2% for Reese Crossings. By neighborhood, Muse Force tops the list at 20.1%. To incentivize participation in the survey, Corvius is sponsoring a drawing for three $50 gift cards each week through the end of the survey on April 18th. Additionally, on April 20th, there will be a drawing for a $50, $250, and a $750 gift card. Once again, the survey ends April 18th. Meanwhile, March is Women's History Month. This year is observance hosted by the 70th ISR Wing and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office at Club Meade featured a panel discussion with Catrice Smith, the 70th Division Chief for Information Protection, Major Kara Hawkins, the XO of the Army's Baltimore Recruiting Station, and Catherine Zuback from the National Security Agency. Which is how do you mentor, how do you empower others? And empowerment of women is about making women self-reliant, right? It's wonderful and everybody needs a community to lean on, but you need to be self-reliant. You need to be able to know, again, what your weaknesses are and how, how you move beyond. So. When you're helping others, you need to be honest in your feedback. You need to be helpful in terms of actionable activities that you can do. And you need to place people into a position where they can grow. We'll post all of the Q&A on our YouTube channel very soon. Meanwhile, if you're a regular viewer, you may know that we produced a series of stories on Fort Meade's Training Support Center and how they assist all services in meeting their training goals. In particular, we focused on the 741st Military Intelligence Battalion, 704th MI Brigade, as they prepared to qualify under the new Army Marksmanship Standard. This week, we conclude the series with a trip to the range where the soldiers qualified using the new standard, many of them for the first time. Uh, one thing we're finding out is the, the new firing range is taught in the new basic training. Uh, a lot of these NCOs haven't fired it. So their real first uh, uh, embracing of this, this new uh, firing, uh, firing qualification standard is the last couple of years. With the old qual, it's just not preparing our soldiers for any future assignments where they go, may, may go to force comm with the pop-up targets and be introduced to the new qual. So now that we have the barriers, we can at least give them some type of familiarization other than the previous qual, which is still hands-on a weapon, but this will be brand new to them. So at a force comm unit, they may get looked at from some staff sergeant who's never fired on a new qual. After discussing with everybody there as far as how it went, they no noticed some things we could probably help to make things work a little better. It's uneven out there, things of that nature, and the, the barricades move a little bit. Howard hopes that these reports encourage other units to take advantage of what the Training Support Center offers. We can show the units around here uh, what the other units are doing uh, to overcome these obstacles they're training. And getting us out there in the videos, uh, especially uh, uh, here in this area, they can actually see how it's working and how we can find, overcome some of these obstacles. April is the month of the Military Child and National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Fort Meade's Family Advocacy Program has a full slate of events scheduled for the month. The biggest event, of course, is the annual Fun Fair on April 2nd. The Fun Fair features organizations on and off post that provide child and youth services. There's much more on the calendar, including daily seminars and workshops. For details, call Family Advocacy at 301-677-4118. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann for everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office. Have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.